uh, two co-workers I worked with for over 30 years, uh, both passed away with COVID. Mm -hmm. you, uh, I'm not going to have everybody just mute for a minute because once it goes live, it's going to be broadcast and anything you say. So. Are we live now or? No, no, yeah, give me, give me just a second. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll wait, sorry. <laughs> so. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, thank you. All right, um, good evening and welcome to December's virtual meeting. For everyone participating in the meeting, whether through WebEx or Facebook Live, hope you're healthy, safe, having a great week. Um, by way of introduction to our final meeting of the year, got to have a fun fact. Uh, this will be Roger Gine's 119th regular board meeting. He's only missed one board meeting in all of his 12 years, and that was for his daughter's graduation. And uh, we'll have more to say about Roger later, but uh, for now, we can get started. We'd like to call the regular board meeting to order. Meeting called at uh, 6.04. Go to roll call. Jim Anderson. Present. Dr. Falvo Lang. Here. Roger Gines. Here. Maria Higgy. Here. Carmelita Smith. Here. Here. Thank you. Cindy Sutter. Here. And Dan Sutter is here. Thank you. And uh, so we'll go into memoriam, extend our sincere condolences to the families of the following people who have passed away since our last meeting. Uh, for those we serve, <clears throat> Holly Johns. Holly, age 23, passed away Monday, September 21st. She received services from the SSA department. Uh, Josephine Porter, Josephine, age 88, passed away Tuesday, September 29th. She received services from the SSA department and attended the Start DD workshop program at Higgins until she retired in 2017. Catherine, Kathy, Ann Dahl, Kathy, age 68, passed away Saturday, October 10th. Uh, she received services from the SSA department and attended the Stark DD workshop program at Higgins and until she retired in uh, 2013. <clears throat> Cynthia Cindy Lee Shelton, 
Cindy, age 69, passed away Friday, October 16th. She received services from the SSA department and retired from Cornerstone Degree Program. Bruce Roy Finley, Bruce, age 79, passed away Friday, November 13th. He received services from the SSA department and formally attended Start TD Workshop Program. Lester Newt Berg, <clears throat> Lester, age 73, passed away Sunday, November 15th. He received services from the SSA department and retired from Stark TD Workshop Program. Lenardi Lenny Charlton Terrence, Lenny, age 67, passed away Wednesday, November 18th. He received services from the SSA department and formally attended the Stark TD Workshop Program. Sandra Sandy K. Rombach, Sandy, age 70, passed away Wednesday, November 25th. She received services from the SSA department and formally attended the Stark TD Workshop Program at Whippledale Center. Philip David Kintig, uh, Philip, age 38, passed away Friday, December 4th. He received services from the SSA department. Paul Klaus, Paul, age 78, passed away Saturday, December 5th. He received services from the SSA department and firmly attended the Stark TD workshop program. And Sheila A. Bailey, Sheila, age 61, passed away Tuesday, December 8th. She received services from the SSA department. And Roger, we, we uh, do extend our condolences for the passing of your mother-in-law, Shani Pongratz, age 65, on December 9th. We extend you and your family your thoughts and prayers. Let's take a moment of silence of all of their memories. Okay, thank you. Okay, I now need a motion to approve minutes from the regular board meeting held October 27th. Thank you, moves. So we got a uh, second, okay. Any additions, revisions, or corrections? With none, all in favor of the board meeting minutes say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Minutes are approved. So we have recognition of retirees. Uh, take it over or uh, let Connie take over from here. Good evening, everyone. Um, I do have a uh, PowerPoint that I'll share with you. Just one second. <clears throat> Can everyone see that? Um, no, I, I don't. I, yeah. You don't? I, I just, I still see the screen of uh, participants. Okay. Just one second. Do you see that? No. Okay. I see um, you. <laughs> okay. Brandon, do you want to share it on your end? I'm sorry. I can see it, but I, for whatever reason. Okay. This is the awkward silence part of the board meeting. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, so, there we go. Great, thank you. We had a backup plan. Um, so this evening, we'd like for you to join us in thanking um, Kathy Albright and Myrna Blosser um, for their years of service. And both of these ladies are retiring on December 31st, 2020. Um, Myrna is the principal of our school programs, and she's retiring with 32 years of service. And we just gathered a few um, pictures of Myrna um, on the job at Southgate. And uh, some of the pictures with her students, and then certainly some pictures with her staff. 
Um, <laughs> I'm not sure who that guy is, but. <laughs> <laughs> lot of enjoyment there. And of course, Kathy Albright. Um, Kathy is our executive assistant and she is retiring after 13 years of service. We have some pictures of Kathy as well on the job. Always with a smile. So we do want to express our appreciation and thanks to Kathy and Myrna for their years of service and wish them well um, for a long, happy and very healthy retirement. Thank you. Yeah, and it has been my uh, honor and pleasure to be able to work with both of them very closely. Um, Myrna, her just commitment to children is unrivaled. Uh, she worked every day to make ordinary activities special for our students and make sure that they were and continue to be afforded just those unique experiences that that make an education whole. So, Myrna, thank you. Um, do you want to say anything at this point? Would love for you to be able to say something. I know you're on here. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Um, uh, I just wanted to say um, thank you, Bill and Stark TV board members for the opportunity to have. Um, it's really hard to fathom that I've been working for Stark County Board of DV for since March of 1988, which time must just fly. I have no idea how that happened. Um, with 32 years and nine months of service, I had a lot of different positions in the board, but I was grateful for each experience because it just helped me grow in every capacity that I was able to do. Um, I've been blessed to work with so many families and staff building relationships and helping students move on in their life to careers, community, and achieve personal goals. Those were also my goals. I can only say thank you, thank you for supporting our school programs and believing in me to guide the program through the many changes, and I mean many, that have taken place, especially recently. I don't know where or what my next path will be, but this has been a very rewarding one, heartbreaking, tearful, with so many proud moments. Stark programs and Stark DD have truly been my family for many of the, for all of these years, and you will all be very much missed. Merry Christmas and blessings in the coming years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Myrna. I do want to say uh, certainly a couple words about Kathy Albright, who I've been able to work with uh, for eight, eight or nine years now, and it's just been a delight. Um, she has a gentle, kind spirit and an attention for detail that probably keeps me employed. So thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Would you like to say a few words, Kathy? Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. And when I was trying to decide if it was time for me to retire, I discovered I'd been working almost 47 years, so now um, I decided I'm ready to not work and do a lot of things I've never had time to do. And out of all the places I've worked, Star, Star County Board of DD is definitely my favorite. Um, it, it's been a real learning experience starting here as a workshop sub to becoming the executive assistant to the superintendent. And I've definitely acquired a variety of new skills over the past 13 years since I've been here. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that I'm ending my career on a high note. And Bill's been a wonderful boss and my all my coworkers are so caring and compassionate. And I will miss everyone very much and I wish nothing but the best for Stark PD and the people it serves. And I wish all of you a um, Merry Christmas and a happier new year, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, round of applause. So, uh, thank you, Myrna and Kathy. Uh, congratulations and, and good luck. And uh, we'll, we will miss you. So.
All right, so now we want to move on to the recognition of our board member, Roger Giants. And I believe there's uh, some, uh, someone will share the screen, I think, or? Yes. Okay, yeah. So join us in uh, thanking Roger for his 12 years of service at the Stark County Board of Developmental Disabilities. We did put just to, together a few pictures of Roger through the years. And if we could just go through the slides at this time. Those were some of his many, many responsibilities on the board. Uh, he he spent as far as ever since I was here until I think last year uh, when Dr. Jessica took over, he was the recording secretary. Uh, right. He's been on the finance committee, nominating committee, and he was a uh, TWI trustee up until the trans uh, up until That's the right. transition that that uh, that occurred. There's Roger and me at the uh, community walk we have been having annually. So, um, and next slide. <clears throat> Roger has volunteered his time over the years with various Special Olympics sports, including track, softball, and basketball. And he regularly had a competition with his family on the Great Pumpkin Race and got them all involved, as you can see them there today. today. And, and so this is uh, Roger and his family that was just recognized uh, for uh, during Employment uh, Awareness Month. We want to express our deepest appreciation uh, and thanks to Roger for his 12 years of dedicated service. On a personal note, uh, Roger is the last board member and was a part of my was a part of my hiring over 10 years ago, and I just am going to personally miss him deeply, uh, especially after the first couple years uh, that I was here it was incredibly challenging and we faced many hurdles and challenges uh, and Roger was there as a confidant and a friend. I just wish you well and I wish you health and happiness as you go forward and I know that we will uh, certainly continue to see you and I certainly hope we continue to meet for lunch as we would from time to time. Roger, we do uh, have a recognition for you and we'll deliver it uh, in person. Uh, and this is a sample of what the plaque looks like. And it reads, we, with our deepest appreciation, we be hereby honor Roger Gines in recognition for your 12 years of dedicated service, devotion, and commitment to the Stark County Board of Developmental Disabilities, January 2009 through December 2020. <laughs> We thank you. Okay. Roger, what do you look like? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. If uh, Roger, if you have some words or. Well, I thought about writing a few things down, but then I knew as I do in uh, Jeremy is I either lose the paper or don't follow it anyway. Uh, um, I, I do want to say one thing is that uh, I remember the process. Uh, my first year on the board is when we were looking for a new uh, superintendent. And uh, uh, Bill did not enter into the first round at all. And uh, we went through the first round of interviewing and nothing worked. <laughs> and uh, then the second round went out and Bill then applied, and uh, I think it was uh, 
it was meant to be because uh, Bill has been uh, one of the best, if not the best, superintendent that Tech PD has had. Um, and uh, I, I, I do appreciate his friendship and uh, all that uh, he's meant to my family. Uh, I do uh, think that I'm leaving the board in a better uh, uh, place because uh, every board member that we have now uh, in the past, uh, and I won't go into <laughs> the names or anything like that, but in the past we've had a few board members that had their own personal agenda. But uh, I am glad to see that the board that we have now, uh, each and every one is uh, dedicated uh, and uh, look, uh, do what they can or, or look at what they can do best for our individuals. And uh, we worked so well together and got along really well. And uh, you, guys, you guys just saw a great uh, group of people. Uh, the, uh, the people that work at uh, Start DD have, uh, and they uh, have uh, gone out of their way to help my family personally. Uh, my son Paul, then my son Dominic, and son, uh, uh, Whitley, my uh, daughter. Uh, they've all benefited from uh, services from uh, Start DD. They're all in employment, uh, out in employment. Uh, Paul is working at. Chili's now as a dishwasher and loving it. And uh, Dominic and Whitley, of course, at uh, two different uh, Walmart locations. So the Start DD has uh, been a great help to my family. And, uh, and I really enjoyed serving. I always feel that I've gotten more from uh, Start DD than I was able to give. And uh, I know when I was, uh, I, I spent seven years as a uh, class A certified uh, Special Olympics. Uh, uh, I, uh, I served there as, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed the people, the uh, individuals I worked with and to know and, and see and participate and work hard. And it brought a joy to my heart because uh, when I watch them go out and compete, you know, you watch uh, college athletes and you watch uh, professional athletes, and they're all going out to, uh, you know, uh, trying to gain something or better themselves. I, I Special Olympians, they go out and they just work their tails off because they just want to for the pure uh, love of the sport. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no agendas, there's no commercials, uh, hedging on the horizon or anything like that, nothing going on, but just the pure love of the sport. And uh, that was a that was a great time in my life also. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And I, I hope and pray that you have a great uh, Christmas and uh, a new year, better year than we've had this year. I hope you all stay healthy and take care of yourselves. And uh, I, I just, uh, I uh, hope that you uh, continue on and continue uh, doing great things for uh, Stark DD. Thank you. Roger. Thank you, Roger. Those are good words. And uh, I just want to say it's been an honor and privilege to be able to serve with you. And I want to thank you for your commitment and dedication to the 3,900 people that we support in Stark County. So, and uh, um, I, you know, I'm glad the board can put that small token of appreciation of a plaque together and hope you enjoy that uh, for years to come. So uh, is there any other board members that want to share his or her sentiments or? Or Bill, you want to say, say anything more? Or? I know over time it's been, uh, we've had some uh, challenging votes over the years that we've had to get through. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Roger, you've been, you've been part of all that transformation. So thank you. So. 
Okay. I hope, uh, hope I also one of the things is I hope that uh, Lisa and, and uh, will keep me informed on special events and things like that. And I, I hope to uh, maybe uh, participate and, and help out uh, however I can in the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we can. Uh, um, Go to the next area here. We entertain anyone for public speaks. I don't know. Do, I don't, I'm not sure. Do we have anybody there? Or okay, no public speaks. We'll move on to the president's report. <clears throat> so we've got quite an agenda this evening. We've got a, a lot that's been occurring. Um, uh, especially at the state level through the legislature, we are authorized. Hey, for Dan, yeah, we, yes, we do. We do have someone here to speak. Oh, okay. Back to public speaks. Yep. Okay. Yes. So I'm, uh, I think you just take my spot. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, speakers limited to three minutes, unless uh, additional times expended. If you can uh, uh, state your uh, name and address, and. Uh, hey, Gage Haverfield. Uh, 10859 Mogador Avenue, Union Town, Ohio. And um, I, I just wanted to take the time to um, to thank the board. Um, my, my daughter, uh, Claudia Haverfield, she's been at uh, Prater Willie Homes in Oconomowoc since uh, 2016. And um, I wish I had pictures to show you. I mean, I, I could show you my phone, <laughs> but um, uh, I mean, the physical transformation for her is is, is amazing. Um, but uh, beyond that, um, she's just living a life that um, um, I wish everybody with her condition could have because um, with prader willi syndrome, th they have um, major food anxiety and um, basically they're hyperphagic and there's there's not a shut off valve you know so so they're they're food seeking all the time and um, when she went to Carter Willie Holmes of Oconomowoc in 2016 she was 262 pounds and um, right now she's pretty stable she hasn't lost a whole lot of weight but, but she's like in the 145 to 150 range and I mean she's a third of the person she, she was um, but but beyond that, from from um, just a, a a mental, you know, happy, um, she understands her 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 syndrome so much better because they're continuously working with her, and um, you know, as far as having meltdowns, um, you know, they they teach them to to sense those coming on, and, and they teach them how to cope. Um, but you know, the big thing with where she's at. Everybody in that group home system has the same syndrome, so they're able to to manage the the, the food situation, and basically food anxiety is, is taken out of the picture. So, um, you know, we we kind of equate that syndrome, or just to kind of give people that don't understand what it's about, um, you know, just figure, you know, somebody that's addicted to crack, and you know, their mind is always on on crack, you know, or, or whatever whatever you're addicted to. And that's that's the way it is for, for you know a person with Prader Willi syndrome, um, and that's why she couldn't function in in the in the school system just because there's so much going on and um, so many food temptations. But there, um, you know that that's a big part of her, her her life, and it's it's you know that food anxiety is taken out of the picture, so so they can really live you know a, a normal life, enjoyable life, and and um, she's just in a fantastic place. So I just want to pass on, um, you know, my, my wife's appreciation for um, consideration of, of continuing to keep her there. And, uh, thank you very much. Okay, Gage, thank you for sharing uh, those issues. And on behalf of the board, we thank you for speaking with us tonight. That's a good story. And uh, <clears throat> Okay, we can, uh, we'll move on to the president's report. That's okay. And um, as stated, we've got uh, a quite, an, quite an agenda this evening. Uh, a lot's been occurring. Um, 
for example, at the state level through the legislature, we're authorized to have uh, six more months uh, to meet virtually. Uh, given that approval, I'd recommend we continue to meet virtually. Uh, but I do want to get everyone's input as to uh, as we go into the new year. And any thoughts on this from any of the board members? I, and I think that's a great idea, um, especially since we're purple right. and the numbers are not going in the right direction. Right. And you know, we'll see what happens with the vaccine. Right. But I would recommend that we maybe reevaluate at the end of first quarter or something. I, I agree. I like yeah, I would say at least the three months. I think that sounds reasonable. Maybe things will be better by then. Right. Yeah, take it uh, month by month, quarter by quarter. And uh, OK, that sounds good. Um, so I did have the opportunity to participate on the strategic planning uh, steering committee. <clears throat> we should be seeing a draft on that soon. Uh, we had a good mix of participants rep representing providers, advocates, clients, and education. Uh, this was facilitated very well by Amy Rankert. And um, it was it, it was interesting to experience how we're evolving as Start DD. For example, um, last strategic plan. Uh, we made sure there was clear emphasis on, on oversight and sustainability. And now we consider these more or less ingrained in our daily work. So we can leverage those strengths and go to the next step, next level. And uh, for example, focusing more on choice and provider relationships. And uh, so that was a good experience on the strategic planning committee. Uh, finally, uh, Kathy and Katrina. We'll be sending us board evaluations as well as our self evaluations after the meeting. So if everyone can have those completed and submitted back to Katrina Sabian by Friday, January 8th, that would be good. And that concludes the president's report. Good evening. I hope everyone is well this evening. So as we close out uh, 2020, I want to thank you as a board for your flexibility and support this year. I also want to extend my gratitude to the people we serve, their families, our employees, and the provider community who worked diligently to ensure people were healthy and safe this year. We're now nine months into this pandemic and there's light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine arriving in for our provider community. Uh, in approximately two weeks for both people served and for our direct support professionals who support them. We have had seven deaths and we are deeply saddened by those that have le left us. Of those seven, three people lived in nursing facilities, one lived in an intermediate care facility, and three people lived in homes in our community. The ranges of the people that passed were 38 years to 78 years old. We have had 64 positive cases reported to us. Three cases who live in nursing facilities, 21 cases for people who lived in intermediate care facilities, 37 cases for people who live in homes supported by staff. We have had three cases in our schools uh, two uh, of the students live in the same household. But overall, we've been fortunate, uh, but we firmly believe the low number of cases are attributed by the precautions that we have that have been taken by families, by our employees, and that of our service providers. So the darkest days of the pandemic still may be ahead. But we're continuing with our strict health protocols and the vaccine arriving. And we believe it is time for optimism and hope for a better new year. Within your board packet uh, is a report out on our annual goals uh, we have set for ourselves as well as goals for next year. In January, we'll report out on our four year strategic plan and what was accomplished. We'll also request your approval for a new three-year strategic plan. 
We want to thank the steering committee made up of Dan, our, who was the board member representative. Uh, we had people serve, family members, providers, and employees who made up this 16 person steering committee. We met over a four week time period in two hour sessions. We used as a foundation the feedback from 100 of our stakeholders who submitted their input as the very foundation for that plan. Uh, it was last week uh, we had a pre accreditation preparation survey. Uh, MEORC, the Mid East Ohio Council of Governments, uh, performed that survey. And this gave us an interim report card to test our systems to ensure our processes are in line with the rules and regulations as stipula stipulated by the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Given remote work, a transition from Gatekeeper to BrickCo is our relational database, and the pandemic, uh, the findings found us really, really in good shape. Of course, there were things found and identified that we need to tighten up and prepare us for our 2022 accreditation survey. I just wanna extend our kudos to early intervention, our service and support administration department, human resources, investigative services, provider compliance, and RNQA who were reviewed as a part of this accreditation survey. So we are very, very uh, glad in many respects that we're nearing the end of 2020 and uh, what 2021 will have to offer. So I extend my warmest regards uh, to each of you and hope you have a happy and healthy holiday season. At this point in the review, we do have one uh, additional, very brief training for you and that's an MUI review, and that needs to be completed each year, and it doesn't, it's a separate from uh, the previous board in services we've received. And I'm gonna have Tom Vaughn just do a quick review. Uh, it'll be take uh, between three and five minutes. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Tom uh, to provide uh, just an overview of MUI rule and really your responsibility in it. Good evening, everybody. I want to uh, just real quickly go over a couple of things associated with the MUI rule. Um, MUI is major unusual incidences. They are defined by Ohio Administrative Code. Actually, there's a total of 19 of them in the uh, rule. These are things that we have to take reports on. We have to actually investigate, follow up, develop preventive measures. Um, and so I want to real quickly cover exactly what they are. Uh, to start with, reporting goes along with the idea that things are alleged, suspected, or actual incidences. They are needing to be reported um, just as incidences. We make the determination what needs to be categorized in what way. Any given incident can become actually more than one category, so you could have for example, an unapproved behavior support that led to a psych admit or something like that. So the number of incidences doesn't necessarily correspond directly with the number of um, categories that are represented in our board report. So starting with category A, category A is actually probably the most severe things. So we have accidental and suspicious deaths, exploitation, failure to report, misappropriation, neglect, physical abuse, prohibited sexual relations, which are relationships between professional staffs and individuals that are consensual, but are outside of the rule. Uh, rights codes violations, which are actually defined in Ohio uh, revised code, sexual abuse and verbal abuse. And you can tell just by the categories that these are most intensive kind of investigation protocols. These are potentially criminal. There's a lot more that goes on with them in terms of notifications, intensity of the investigative process. So category B is 
kind of in the middle, I guess. This is things like attempted suicide. That actually is an actual attempt. Um, things that are verbalizations that don't rise to the level of an attempt uh, do need to be dealt with, but those are handled differently than what we do in a, my unit. Um, deaths that are not accidental or suspicious, medical emergencies, missing persons, peer-to-peer -peer acts, and significant injuries are all things that are category Bs. And then last um, is things that are category C. There's some differences between B and C in terms of notifications, um, but these are law enforcement, which is typically arrest charges or incarcerations, unanticipated hospitalizations. Um, so we're really, this is probably the biggest category that we have. Uh, anything that's outside of a routine hospitalization that's predetermined condition and hospitalization gets reported there. And then unapproved behavior supports. So those are the categories that are needing to be reported to us. When we get them, we identify what they are, we assign them, we do follow up investigation. Everything we do really ultimately is trying to translate into what are you going to do to prevent reoccurrence? The idea here is to develop a better system, to make sure that people are healthy, safe, and protected. If you have something that is potentially an MUI or an incident that needs to be reported, please feel free to contact me through our hotline, 477-4477. That number works 24-7. You can always get somebody to help you out there. Feel free to call me directly or to call Bill if, if you need to make a report, we will certainly help to walk you through that process. Are there any questions? Well, hopefully everybody has a great holiday. I thank you for your time and I'll turn it back over to Bill. Yes. And that will conclude the superintendent's report. Okay, uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Tom, for for that. And uh, uh, the, our committee and department reports are in our board packet. So, are there any additions or deletions that need to be made at this time? With none, at this time, I have a review of policy slated for first reading and turn it over to Connie. I think you're on mute, Connie. I think the presentation of the table of organization was first. If we could do that first. Oh, yeah, that's correct. I'm sorry, Dan. That yeah, it, it is before that, and it's it's not included on the agenda. I do apologize. Oh, okay. So let's go over the uh, table of organization then. Yep. Do you want to share the slide, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah, give me one second. All right. So while he's um, queuing that up, um, in, in compliance with policy 4.56, each year um, the table of organization is presented to the board. Um, the table is actually in your board packet pages 66 through page 85 in its entirety. And the table of organization contains all full time, part time, substitute, and contracted positions, and also any open positions that we have. Um, at this time, there are no recommendations for change to the table of organization for 2020. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Okay, now we can go over. <laughs> right. right. So policy 4.12 personal days um, was reviewed with no changes recommended and policy 4.16 work week and status was also reviewed with no changes recommended. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now it's time to go through our resolutions in which we have many tonight. So we'll try to keep things moving. We've got resolution 124420 and resolution 124520, which approves board expenditures for October, November, 
I need a motion. We'll take these resolutions together. Giants moves. Second. Yes, it seconds. Okay. Discussion from Lee. Unmute yourself. Okay. Please. I got it. Good evening, everyone. So I hope this is big enough for everybody to see. Um, so we'll look at October. So for the month of October, total local revenues of 1.98 million. We did receive our real estate rollbacks from the state. Total state revenues of 217,850 and total federal of 2,458 for total revenue for October of 2.2 million. We'll look at year to dates when we get to November. We had two payrolls during the month of October, 1.2 million, a couple of stipends, nothing really out of the ordinary. Total benefits paid of 1.13 million. Total other expenses of 4.79 million. As you can see here, we did pay waiver match and administrative fees of 4.2 million. So our expenditures exceeded our revenues by 4.9 million. Looking down here at the bottom, we began the year with 49.39 million in unencumbered cash, 2.7 million in open 2020 POs, 453,000 in canceled 2019 POs, positive net change in position gives us unencumbered cash at the end of October of 52.8 million. Now looking here at November, total local revenues of 150,000, total state of 238,000, and federal of 793, total revenue of 1.18 million. Just looking over here in our year to date, um, I've noted the increase in real estate due to the pipeline collection, and then also noted having a cost report settlement we received in 19 and, and not in 20 gives us this negative variance in federal. Looking below at our expenses, again, two payrolls during the month of November, nothing really to note out of the ordinary other than some stipend payments for a couple thousand. Benefits of 701,000, total other of 146,000, total of 2.06 for the month. Again, expenditures exceeding revenues by 882,000. The one thing I will note, and which we've talked about every month, is this um, savings and the enhanced rate for the waiver match payment. So you can see so far year to date, we've saved $2.8 million in the, that payment. Again, looking at what we started the year with, 49.39 million in unencumbered cash, 1.7 million open in 2020 POs, the same amount in 2019 that were canceled, 453,000. Again, a positive change in our financial position gives us unencumbered cash at the end of November of 52.96 million. We're gonna look at these budget versus actuals, but really only focusing on the year to dates and the available budget. So 47.29 million spent, our targets, or I'm sorry, received in, targets 83.3%, so um, we're above that target. 41.49 million spent year to date, as of October, 81.63%, and our target, again, 83.3%. Looking over at our available budget to the right, mostly made up of Payroll services, 2.8 million, as well as you see that waiver match, 2.4 million that was unspent. Again, looking at November, just the year to date, 48.4 million in revenue. So that's 95.3% of what we've expected. Our target here is 91.67%. So again, we're above that. 43.55 million in expenses. Again, we're below that target, mainly due to waiver match expense unspent. Looking over to the right, our available budget at the end of November of five and a half million dollars. Our prior year encumbrance report is the same for both October and November. We carried over 736,000 in POs from last year, paid 282,000, canceled 453,000, and the um, remaining 2019 POs does remain at zero. So looking at our resolutions, and I hope this is big enough for everybody. You can see our two payrolls here. 
uh, the weekend in the 17th and the 31st. And again, our week by week down here, you can see the week ending the 31st, we did pay our waiver match. That's 1244.20. And then we have 1245.20. Again, two payrolls, nothing really out, out of the ordinary with them either. And then our week by week um, non payroll expenses for 847000 If there are no questions, requesting approval for 1244.20 as well as 1245.20. Okay, all in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Post say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the financials for October and November are approved. Thank you. Uh, resolution 124620 approves the 2021 final budget. I need a motion. Giants moves. Second. Alpha Lang seconds. And discussion from Lee. Okay, can everybody see this okay without making it full screen? I'm good. Okay. So before we get into the 2021 budget, we're just going to go over some highlights like we always do. So for our revenues, we usually uh, expect an increase in the excess cost because every new student gets pushed in that pool to build back the district's for excess cost. Again, we'll see that uh, increase in real estate collections due to the pipeline. Really, state and federal is going to remain flat um, in the years to come. And we just found out literally last week that we will receive two cost report settlements that are unaudited, actually, for about $5.8 million that we will receive in January of 2021. Looking at our expenses, some things that we always see is any wage increases previously approved by the board, increase in benefit costs. Of course, the increase in waiver match just under a million. We will right now see that enhanced rate for waiver match uh, through March of 2021. And then we do have an additional provider assistance that we will pay through waiver match of $1.05 million to assist providers during this um, trying time. Some capital investments, we're looking to redoing the Whippledale parking lot. Uh, we also leave room in the budget for any kind of renovation. Uh, we did some for SSA and EI space, but any future renovations as well. Building maintenance such as HVACs, paging systems for the schools, fence at the bus garage, et cetera. And then again, our computer IT refresh we do every year for about 140,000. Looking in the years to come, again, we're expected to remain flat for local revenues, except for that historical increase we've been seeing in real estate collections, and also that continued increase in excess costs on new students. Nothing really to report for state and federal, um, really expecting to remain flat at this point. I haven't heard anything otherwise. Looking at our forecast and beyond, so 2021 is the first year we will pay for the direct service professional wage increase. Um, so that's the first year we'll start that and it'll extend on through the years. Again, our waiver match expense estimated increase of about 900,000. Our annual contribution to NEON, uh, which is usually about four to 500,000 a year. And again, capital investment budgets for optional phases of construction. This does not include any impacts or of other actions in our strategic plan and uh, technology upgrades are included in that as well. Now here, I, I just wanna mention, it might be a little bit small to see, but this is our cash balance after, um, so we saw a forecast back in June, but this is the cash balance after the effects of that enhanced rate. So what it really did was put us in a better position now and I just wanna point out that these, these dollar amounts here at the bottom are actual cash balances. So any purchase orders that we were to open or to carry over from year to year that would reduce these balances are not reflected in this cash. So when we go to look at that budget, budget resolution, please keep that in mind, because um, we usually carry over about $1.8 million in POs, which will reduce that cash ending in 2020. Any questions on this before I move on to the resolution? Okay. 
Now we'll look at resolution 124620. So 124620 is our 2021 budget for January through December. We'll, we'll look at our three funds, but first let's look at our general operating fund. So total local revenues of 35.4 million, total state funds of 6.9 million, total federal funds of 8.6 million. I do want to note that those cost report settlements that we are to receive is not included in this 8.6 million as I was, I certified our, our uh, revenues to the county auditor in November and we just found out about this. Um, it's not a big deal, but I just wanted to point that out. So that federal, the federal dollars we're actually going to receive, of course, they're going to be higher than that 8.6 million. So total revenue is expected of 51 million plus that cost report settlement of about six. So total expenses, 52.89 million. We have our you know wage increases, everything worked into the salary and wages, increases in benefits. 52.89 million in expenses, expenses exceeding revenues by 1.8, showing here, and an unencumbered balance estimated at the end of 2021 of 49.69 million. Now, both at our capital fund and our Cohen Gifts fund, there is no activity. So right now in our capital fund, there's 14,034 remaining. That will stay there. Cohen Gifts remains 125450 That will stay there as well. If there are no questions here, requesting approval of Resolution 124620. Okay. All in favor of the resolution for the 2021 final budget, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the resolution is approved. Okay, resolution 124720 approves the 2021 NEON budget. I need a motion. Thank you. Got a second. Uh, got a motion and a second. All right. Uh, discussion from Lee. Okay, so 124720 is to approve the 2021 NEON budget. So here, just in summary, most of the funds that we send over to NEON, we have our, our $400,000 that we transfer over there, and we'll see that in a resolution here, as well as the family support services. Remember, we did lose that subsidy from uh, DODD. However, we're still transferring that money over to support that program. So 617,000 in revenues. And then again, that FSS money goes back out to support those families. We have other contracted services, room and board, administrative fees, uh, so total expenses of 638000 and we estimate that we'll end a neon cash balance of 502000 at the end of 21. If there are no questions, requesting approval of 124720. All, right, all in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 We'll say nay. No abstentions. The resolution is approved. Resolution 124820 approves the transfer of funds to NEA. NEA. Get a motion. Anderson motions. In a second? Seven seconds. And discussion from Lee. Okay, 124820, as we just discussed, this is to authorize us to transfer $400,000 to NEON for the payment of our board obligations. Uh, we do this resolution each year. There's 14 counties currently in um, the COG for NEON. And right now we purchase these services such as locally funded and supported living administration and invoice payment, family support services, administration and invoice payment, and MUI investigations where our board employee is actually a part of that investigation. So this money that's going to be transferred will provide the resources to replenish funds needed to continue to pay these obligations. If there are no questions, requesting approval of 124820. All in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Post say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the resolution is approved. Moving to resolution 124920, approving transfer of funds to an end for capital housing projects. I need a motion. Giants moves. Anderson seconds. And discussion from Lee. 
Thank you. So 1249.20, um, we saw one of these earlier in the year. This is to enter into an agreement with Hope Homes Foundation and DODD to have passed through capital assistance funds in the amount of 450,805.48. Again, this resolution also authorizes us to transfer these funds back to NEON to basically repay for those dollars expended um, to, to purchase this residential house. So if we look down here, in order to begin these construction projects, the funds were needed up front to Hope Homes. So what we did was go through NEON, pass through these funds. Once the application process is all complete with Hope Homes, DODD will send the funds to us, and then we will turn around and reimburse NEON for this $450,000. Um, and the board does is the one that holds the promissory note on the property for the 15-year term. But Hope Holmes does become the landlord and the owner of record. Um, if there's no questions, requesting approval on 1249.20. Okay, all in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the resolution is approved. Moving to resolution 125020, approve, approves payment of the non federal share of services required for. 2021 Medicaid expenditures. Any motion? Alva Lang moves. Second? Smith second. And discussion from Lee. Thank you. So 125020 is to authorize the appropriation of up to 20.817 million to pay our non federal share of the 2021 Medicaid expenditures as required by these stated revised codes. Uh, we did budget for this $20.817 million in the budget that we just looked at to pay our waiver match on obligations. This does include the waiver cost reconciliation should we have one, the HPC increase, and related administrative fees. Um, this is our ongoing financial commitment of the Stark County Board, and the amount specified is adequate to assure the services for which the Medicaid expenditures are made will conform to all applicable state and federal laws. If there are no questions, requesting approval of 125020. Okay, all in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the resolution is approved. Resolution 125120 approves next year's service contracts. Thank you, motion. Giants moves. A second? No second. And discussion from Lee. Thank you. So 1251.20 lists out all of the contracts that we have right now that exceed $25,000. Um, as you go through this list, we have the Star County Sheriff contract for the investigation and related activities. All locally funded individuals that don't have a waiver are on here not to exceed $550,000. The Employee Resource Network that we spoke about uh, life services EAP that's available to the provider community, as well as a slew of information technology contracts such as copier maintenances, um, licenses, um, and as well as Microsoft licenses as well. And then all other, which include NEON, which was the budget that we just reviewed, our dues and service contracts with OOD and Canton data print for postmarking. If nobody has any questions, I'm requesting approval of service contract resolution 1251-20. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Any abstentions? If not, the resolution is approved. Resolution 1252-20 approves a second round of the board's provider financial assistance program. I need a motion. Smith approves. Are motions? Here. Giant seconds. Giant seconds. Okay. Discussion from Ed. Ed Lewis. Yes, as stated, this is the second round of provider assistance that the board will be uh, giving to providers in our community. Um, what this will do is this will allow the board to be able to provide financial assistance to our um, providers who will need it for either re PPE reimbursement, um, other overheads related to household supplies, groceries, equipment, or health and safety supplies. 
Uh, in order to receive this reimbursement, providers do have to make an application, sir, uh, sign a service agreement, and provide receipts for reimbursement uh, beginning January 1st, 2021. We do want to keep in mind we are prohibited from supplementing any DSP salaries or other direct payment to DSPs. All payments are to be made um, subject to the board's funding and can be in amounts from $750 to $6,000. We are also continuing with our conducting of the criminal background checks and database checks. And we are also continue to assist providers in the recruitment of an alternative workforce based upon the guidance that the board has received from the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. If there are no questions, I am requesting approval of resolution number 12-52-20. Okay, thank you. All, all in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the resolution is approved. Resolution 125320 approves group dental agreement. I need a motion. Salvo Lang moves. In a second. Giant seconds. Thank you. We've got discussion from Connie. You're muted, Connie. I'm sorry. Um, resolution 125220 would be um, a agreement with all care insurance company that would begin on January 1st, 2021 and conclude on December 31st, 2022 for dental insurance for our employees. So currently the board does provide eligible employees with dental coverage. Um, it's a comprehensive plan with four categories, which includes single employee and children, employee and spouse and full family. Currently, um, participating employees pay 50% of the premium and the board pays the other 50%. The board's share on an annual basis is 140,000 and the employee share is 140,000. This uh, past fall, we did go out to um, our local broker, GDK, to receive some competitive bids on our dental quote. Um, the quote we did secure was a 5.8% premium reduction compared to our premium cost that we were currently paying. We also looked at the COGS dental plan. Um, as you know, the COG is our health insurance provider. Um, it was determined that the COGS dental plan would represent 125% increase or $170,000 to the board and to the employees on an annual basis. So for the um, individual employee, this would equate to between $315 to $970 a month, depending on which of the four categories um, that you were in. So as I mentioned, the dental plan is a very popular plan. 82% of our employees are currently enrolled um, and that would equate to 266 employees. So if there are no questions, I would request approval to re for resolution 125220. 125320, uh, 12, right? Oh, I'm sorry, 5320, you're right. Oh, no problem, okay. So all in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Post say no. Any abstentions? With none, resolution is approved. And we have resolution 125420 approves transfer vehicles to the city of Ravenna. We need a motion. Higgy moves. Second. Second. Thank you. And discussion from uh, Diane Sidwell. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Um, good evening. Resolution 125420 is requesting the title transfer of three passenger vans to the city of Ravenna. Ohio Rise Code 
30712D states that the county may sell or donate county personal property, including motor vehicles, regardless of the value to the federal government, state, or any political subdivision of the state. The city of Ravenna is a political subdivision of the state of Ohio. The three passenger vans are being taken out of service and are slated for county auction. The city of Ravenna will transfer titles to family and community services for the vehicles to be used by the Stark County Veterans Service Commission to support Honor Home Stark County. Honor Homes is a program with Stark County veterans that are homeless and in very much need of vehicles to ride transportation for the veterans. Any questions? No questions. I, we had an echo there. I think I think I received it all. I assume everyone else did too. Um, so all in favor of the resolution? Say aye. 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 Post say nay. Any abstentions? With none. Resolution is approved. Okay, we move to uh, second reading board policies presented at the October meeting and. Uh, uh, County will uh, present the policies. We have three policies for second reading that were all reviewed with no changes recommended, and they are policy 4.28 military leave, policy 4.48 employee property reimbursement, and policy 5.06 early intervention transition. Okay, so that brings us to resolution 125520, providing the approval for those pol policies for second reading. I need a motion. Giants moves. And a second. Anderson second. second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Um, with none, all in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Post, post say nay. Any abstentions? With none, the board policies for second readings are approved. Okay, we will now have our scheduled executive session to discuss performance evaluation of the superintendent. I need a motion to go into executive session. Hickey moves. In a second. Lang seconds. Okay. For our listeners, uh, we'll be taking no action after executive session. If you choose to not stay on, uh, please have a very safe and happy holiday season. Um, so we'll now uh, need a roll call vote to go into executive session. So roll call, uh, Jim Anderson. Present. Uh, Dr. Falvo Lang. Okay. Yeah. Here. Roger Gines. Yes. Marie Higgy. Yes. Carmelita Smith. Yes. Cindy Sutter. Cindy Sutter. Sorry, yes. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and Dan Sutter, yes. Okay, Brandon is going to move us into a breakout room, and this may take a couple of minutes. Yeah, give me a second here, and I will get you guys moved in. You'll okay. automatically jump into the session here in just a minute or so. So when that at this point in time, we're at executive session at seven thirteen. As soon as as soon as you get us moved in, and Dan, will you be jumping out of executive session to let me know that you're out? I yeah, I I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll make that attempt. If if not me, it'll be somebody else. So okay, no problem. All right.
Test, test, test.
it then, automatically mutes you guys. So, okay. Oh, Shay. Go ahead and unmute yourself, or Dan. Okay, I'm unmuted. All right. Okay, are we back into the live uh, uh, WebEx meeting? Okay, so we are out. Uh, executive session is complete. We're out of executive session at 737. Okay, we're um, next board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, January 26, 2021 at 6 p.m. Before we close again, Roger, thank you for your service. We wish, we wish you ongoing health and happiness. Everyone have a very happy holiday season. Uh, Merry Christmas. And I now need a motion to adjourn. Before your motion, uh, yeah. I also want to tell you how much I appreciate your leadership. Uh, you've served several years as the, the board president and, uh, and uh, I wish you the, uh, the next four years of, uh, of board membership. And, uh, in four years, we'll see you uh, retire off the board, I guess. Yep, that's the, that's the plan. And thank you. For, thank you. For that. <laughs> I just want to say one last time, I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, please make the motion. <laughs> I motion to adjourn. I will second that. Yeah. All right. So all, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Jose, nay. <laughs> um, any abst no abstentions? We are now adjourned at 738. Take care. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye, Thank Roger. You. Have a great holiday. holiday. Stay safe. Merry Christmas. Merry Be careful. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bill, for your leadership. <laughs>